Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today, I would like to use the Rhino 7 SubD tool to introduce how to make this Spartan ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. We are going to be making this ring by using the Rhino SubD. And if you don't have a Rhino 7, you can use an older version like Rhino 5. You may still able to find t spline for it. It's really similar. So let's starting from the scratch. We're going to come into the top view and use the picture command. And with this picture command, we can come into any of the, your folder. And I found this image online uh, for me to use as a reference. It doesn't matter how big it is at this point. Uh, I just need to make sure that it's roughly right in the center. And then we can scale it later. With this one, I'm going to make them a little bit lighter so I can see my line. Coming over here on my right view on my material, if you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see this is a transparency right here. So that way we can make it a little bit more transparent and then so it's easier to see. Okay, now we have somewhere close to the center. We may not follow it exactly, but we're going to have something like this and let's go ahead to lock it, right? With this, we're going to creating a sub -D plane. And with this sub -D plane, I'm going to have X for four count, Y for four count. And we roughly going to get something look like this. After we got this one, uh, I'm going to actually to make something symmetrical. So I do not need to, you know, model all of them uh, on both right and left side. So we're going to use this command for reflect. And we are going to reflect with the Y axis. And let's click on any size that you wanted to edit. So I'm going to click on the right side of the Y axis and hit enter. All right. So notice that one side will be lighter color the other side will be darker color right so what we wanted to do is coming with the point sorry not the point the vertex in the sub d and then we are going to pick it up the point and try to moving this point uh, back to close to the design and if it is hard to see you can actually um, tap it to see the box mode and sometimes it's much easier in the box mode to see those design here. So I'm going to move it as close as to the surface that I have or the drawing that I have and something is going to look like this right now you may notice that I don't have a lot of a control point right at this spot I may need to have another section right there so in this case then you can um, insert a sub D loop and we're going to pick up this and say I want to have another loop right there so then I will have this point that I can bring it out like this right the same thing happened here feel like I need to have another loop so we're going to insert a sub D loop right here somewhere at this area so then we'll have this point and they can be caving this one can come in down in fact, all of them need to be a little bit lower. So I'm going to moving down here to be a little bit lower and moving out a little bit. Right. So let's take a look if that is what we want. We tap it back to uh, the view that is uh, in the smooth mode. And as you can see, this actually need to be caving a little bit more or something like that. And then you can continue to adding into the shape that you want. OK, so now this area right in the middle, we need to define where those is. And because we if we did it, the whole uh, surface right there, we did it a bunch of the area that we wanted to keep. Right. So first of all, I think I need to have another one right here just above the eye. So we wanted to pick up the surface or the faces here, here, here. And we want to subdivide them. So when we subdivide it, we have a lot more things to work on. All right. So with this one, I'm going to delete here, here, all of this. It's going to be deleted. I also going to delete this area right here. It's going to be deleted. 
All right. So then we have those. I'm also going to delete this area right there. And then so we have this opening. If you turn on the box mode, this is what you're going to see. Now let's go ahead to continue edit. I'm going to moving those point to where they supposed to be, right? So this point, I want to move it here. Those point, you want to move it here. And this point, you want to move it to here. And with the eye, they have a certain shape going to come in over like this. This is going to bring down to my drawing and this one too. bring close to the drawing. Now this it's going to close to the nose right here and this one as well coming over like this with this one coming closer, this one going here and this one coming back here. All right, so to see this is a little triangle mean is folding there. So make sure it's not folding. You don't want to you know, fold over there. And this is the eye we want to bring up something like this. You can keep adjusting and see if you got the shape correctly. All right, so now we have this one. I'm going to tap it to see if this is the shape that we like. If we do, we can stop it right here. If we don't, we want to continue to making it. Okay, so right now I have this coming down here. I feel like I need to have another line going between. So I'm going to use this insert point uh, on my sub D and I want to actually insert the point go in between here, 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 here. Right. So then I have a lot more uh, control over here. If I tap it, this one want to come back. So the eye shape is will be more like this way or this going to come up a little bit. Right. And then when we fold it, it won't be like too straight there. OK, so tap it back and forth to see if this is the shape that you want. All right. Now, let's say this is the shape that we want. We no longer need the background. So I'm just go ahead to uh, unlock this background and I simply just go ahead to hide it. OK, now this is the shape of you know the face and then we're gonna starting our ring. I'm going to use the circle command at my front view, snapping into the zero for the diameter for 16 millimeter. All right. And then I'm gonna have this piece gonna going up, snapping all close to something there. All right. When we have something like this and it's not going to be comfortable. So we need to have all the sub D is kind of follow this curve right here. Right. So what I wanted to do in my front view, I'm going to have this close to inside of my ring and then I'm going to come in over here to use bend tool and I'm going to bend from here going down. I actually don't want to snap because they're going to twist. And so I actually want to disable my all snap and have them get it close to the circle that I have there. All right. You see something is cutting inside of the ring is because that doesn't have a lot of the turning point right here. For example, this like big area. So in fact, I'm going to go back and actually I want to insert one more point right there. So let's go ahead to use the insert point. And I want to insert it from this uh, vertex at this point and gonna go from here and go from here. All right, so that maybe folding there will be better. Let's give it another try. We want to use this command for bend and we want to bend it from this midpoint coming down and we want to disable our all snap. Let me maximum this view and they get it really close right there. All right. You see much better. It doesn't cut it inside of our ring. So then we'll have this shape right here. Let's toggle it back to see if that is the shape you want. Uh, if it is the shape that you want, then we can start working on the ring shank, right? So with the ring shank, what I'd like to do, tap it back to the box mode. I'm going to have the face going down a little bit more somewhere around here and I'd like to have my ring shank coming down from those uh, area here. So basically I want to pick up this edges, this edges and this edges and I simply just going to extrude it straight down. All right. So when you have this extruded straight down, you want to make sure that I also follow 
our ring right there something like this all right now you have this tray i actually wanted to align them so i'm going to pick up all the point right here and then just using the gumball 1d scale type it zero so then they will be flat right so then it will be much easier to deal with it later on and i also wanted to align them on this view as well so let's go ahead to align and move it to the place it's pro approximately right there i don't want it to be like too long because it, if you have a too long it's going to cut inside of a ring like this so we just need that a little bit right there okay now we have this uh, we can pick up again all the point coming to this side and just taper them right so now we get something like this we can take a look tape it back and see if that fitting into nicely if it does tap it again back to the box mode the next things we wanted to do is creating the ring shank so we need to duplicate those edges here let's use the command duplicate edges and we want to duplicate these edges for one two three and the same thing on the other side for one two three and hit enter now you have those and make sure you want to use the join command to join them together right uh, one thing I want to mention here, you can use the sweep one rail with the sub D sweep one rail instead of regular sweep one rail. This is the rail, this is the cross section, and this is the cross section. All right, so I'm going to show you something like dramatically big arrow here is when you're using the curve that you have and then you try to use a sub D and then you get something really really crazy even though you uncheck the close and it's still kind of overlapping there um, that is because those are not a sub D curve right so what are we going to do is we need to pick up the curve that we want to sweep on all the rail and also the cross section right there and we want to make them into the sub D friendly by using this icon here for make curve sub D friendly right so now it is a sub D curve how do I know is because there's a little black dot right there on any of the open curve right so now we have this let's go ahead to give it a try we're gonna do exactly the same command we're gonna use a sub D sweep one rail with this rail and this is cross section with the curve and this cross section right here and you will see now we got it better right once we got this shape uh, I actually do not want to change this three section right there but I do want to increase the rail segment right here the more that you have the more close to the ring that you have so maybe into 14 section and then I do want to uncheck the close so then they will be uh, something look like this right I, with the opening there I don't need to go all the way circle so click OK right here and now we have this right here um, this is actually two piece they are not joined together um, so I actually let me just hiding this one and I want to moving those a little bit lower so that way that you can see what I'm doing so I'm gonna pick up the H right here and then coming into my front view I'm going to move them down just a little bit here all right now if I turn it back to where that I have there so then you can see there's a tiny gap in between you know the piece right so in order to have them connected together in the sub D we are going to use something called bridge and we are going to bridge first set is one two three edges the second set is right here one two three edges and then they will connect it together like this now let's go ahead to tap it back into the shape that we have all right look nice now the next thing is i'm gonna come in into my right view and pick up the vertex here and i do want to make them a little bit tapered so i'm gonna pick up those uh, vertex and then just want to scale it down this one want to scale it down and then you want to scale it down gradually so then you will get this tapering right there okay and double check if that is everything is nice if there's a ring size to fit and something like this all right if you're not going to do any change on the shape we will need to turn them into certain thickness right there so let's go ahead to pick up the sub d surface we have and right here you have the offset sub d 
and we want to offset out for whatever thickness that you have. I'm right here setting up for 1.5 here. And then uh, if you want it thicker, you can change it there, right? Um, and then solid equal yes, and then you hit enter. Now, you see like where on the nose, it's like a weird pinching there, and it's hard to see where it's the point. You can tap it back to see the box mode. It's sometimes it's easier to see that way. You can see this point is going inside too much. So I'm going to move them out something like this. All right, and double make sure there's no like a weird folding point inside of the shape. You can tap it back and then you can double make sure that that's correct. Okay, now if this is the shape that you like, let's go ahead to pick up everybody and then we wanted to um, make them remove the crease. So that way that we will have, you know, the smooth surface. Now, this nose doesn't look like too hero-like. It's like a too round here. So we can kind of continue to tweak it, um, maybe make them a bit longer by moving it out, something like this. And double make sure it's that what you want. You also can have another piece on top of it to make the center piece right there. So I'm going to pick up the surface right here, 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 and here. And I simply just going to extrude something out like this, right? So in the render view, you can see something like straight right in the middle if that were for you. Maybe you want to make it a bit more muscular. And in fact, you may not want to have a round you know, it just right there. So we're going to come back to pick up this right here, this one, this one, uh, the H follow along with this one coming over and pick one by one like this one, this one, go all the way to the end like this one and this one. And I actually want to add crease back to them. So then uh, you will get something like this. All right. Let me go ahead to make them a little bit wider and uh, maybe wanted to move out something like this coming outside a little bit, like coming out a little bit, scale it down. So you can continue to tweak it and get it to the shape that you want. Let's take a look on the render view. So then I will have like everywhere around it, but on the top is a little bit harsh. If that were for you better, or change the thickness on the ring shank if you like, and then the sign of material on it. I hope you enjoy this video. I have a course gonna show you step by step how to use the sub D in the Rhino 7. Check out the course if you are interested. Thank you for watching and I will see you next. Thank <laughs> you.